All right, so in lesson 1-4, properties of real numbers, we learned the names of a bunch of different properties, things that we're allowed to do in mathematics that um, I call our legal moves. They're, they're allowed, things that we can do, um, and it doesn't, um, you know, we, we know what we're getting. It's a, it's a, it doesn't come up with some false statement. And so let's start out with number seven. Number seven, you see where we're changing the order of the add-ends, the things that are being added together, and they're equal, okay? So when you move things around, just like commuters taking the bus, moving from one place to another, um, we, we're calling this property the commutative. Commutative means uh, it refers to the movement of the things, the commutative property, and what operation are we allowed to do this under? And well, in this case, the operation that we're doing it for is addition, okay? You're allowed to do this with addition. You're allowed to move the order of uh, the numbers being added together, the add-ends, and we still get the same result, okay? Now, number eight says, if you take something, in this case, seven-ninths, and you multiply it by one, it continues to be seven-ninths. Okay, continues to have the same value. And when we do not change the identity of something, seven ninths remains seven ninths, that's an identity property. Okay, so this is the identity property. And what is the operation that we're doing it with? The identity property of multiplication. And again, when you do something that doesn't change this thing's value, then that's an identity property. And look at number nine. What are we doing to H that lets it remain H? We're adding zero. Okay, so for with, with multiplication, number eight, you can multiply by one, and it stays the same. With addition, like number nine, you can add zero, and it doesn't change its value. And I'm going to give an example of each of those in just a second. So this one is called the identity property. Of what's the operation that we're doing? Addition. Okay, and I'm going to give an example of each one, uh, real quick. For the identity property of multiplication, we can take something like two thirds as a fraction, and we can multiply it by one, but in a weird form, four over four, let's say. Four over four is equal to one. And since this is really uh, applying the identity property, where you're multiplying by one, if you look up top here, we're multiplying the fraction by one in the form of just four fourths, then we get the same value. It becomes eight twelfths, okay? That looks different but it is the same value, so it maintains its identity as a number with this particular value and that some particular location on the number line. Yep. So this is where it kind of applies. That's uh, one real-world application of the identity property of multiplication. You can multiply a fraction by some fraction, same top and bottom, to change what it looks like but not change its value. Now, identity property of addition, um, and I have used... I've referenced this kind of in class before, is if you had something like, uh, let's say, um, negative 2 minus negative 3, okay? I'm, I can say, okay, well, that's like having these two little negative 1 tokens here, right? That's worth negative 2. But it's telling you here, now, after you start with negative 2, it says take away three of them. Well, do we have three of them? No, we don't actually. Okay, we don't have three of them there. But we are allowed to add a negative positive pair, which equals zero. We're not really adding anything. And that's the idea uh, up here for the number nine. You're kind of like adding zero because this, those two cancel each other out and you're kind of adding zero. Okay, and then what do we do there? Well, now we can then take away the negative 3 that we've got. It still has a total value of negative 2, 
These are the only things that don't have something canceling them out. But now we can take away the negative three and watch what I do with my eraser. Take away those negative threes, or those three negatives rather, and what are you left with? You're left with one positive. And you can see then that this is equal to positive one, okay? And we applied that property generally by saying we're going to add a positive negative pair, and that's essentially equal to zero. And adding zero is what number nine is doing, okay? Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, short answer, if you add zero to a number, you, it remains that number, and so that's an identity property. Now, number 10, 389 times zero equals zero. This is relevant. It's going to come up a lot. When you multiply something by zero, it turns into zero, whatever that thing was. And what do we call that? I call that the zero property. The zero property of multiplication. If you multiply by zero, you get zero. Zero property of multiplication. Now, number 11. Notice that that's the same as in number seven. Just like in number seven, where you're changing the order of the two numbers that are being added together, that's community property of addition. We're changing the order of the two things being multiplied together. We still get the same result. And I'll keep it in the same color because it's the same idea. This is the commutative property, except what's the operation? Well, in this case, it is multiplication and not addition, like number seven was. And finally, number 12, what's going on here? Well, what they're doing here is they're saying, okay, if you took x and you multiplied it by negative 1, you'd get negative x. And there's a rule that says the multiplication property is called the multiplication property of negative 1. And that's what the answer is. The multiplication property of negative 1 Property. Sorry about my handwriting. I'm using a special stylus for writing on the screen, and it's kind of sloppy. Of negative one, and what that says is, if you multiply something by negative one, you're going to get its opposite. It's going to change it from the positive form of it to the negative form of it, or from the negative form of it to the positive, depending. Right? It'll switch its sign to its opposite. So that's what happened up here in this step. The 9 is not actually being used in this thing. What we're really looking at is how this combines. And if you take x, multiply by negative 1, you get negative x. Multiplication property of negative 1. Hope that helped.